Welcome back everyone to the Samurai 7 Retrospective. This episode will focus on another non-samurai character of the series, in this case Kiara. Now, Kiara is probably the hardest character to look at, um, at least in my eyes and from a logistical standpoint. And uh, I say this because Kiara stands out as the only major character other than Ukyo, which is completely original to this adaptation of Seven Samurai. And this affects her in very odd and inconsistent ways. While it does give the writers free reign to build a character from the ground up, like they did with Ukyo, doing so seems to be hampered by the desire to prevent any great altering to any other characters present or any events too drastically. As a result, Kiara is both a very important character and, especially near the end, of the series, one of very wavering significance. Unlike Ukyo, who kind of comes into his own and very clearly takes over his scenes, Kiara kind of just melds into the folds into the background of the series, and over time, her presence slowly declines. It's a very odd place to be in, and the logistics of her character and its presence fascinate me simply because I don't necessarily understand why it ended up being this way. Before we go more into depth about that though, what's her place in the story? Now, Kiara is introduced in Episode 1 as the Water Priestess slash Shrine Maiden of Kana Village. She serves a very important purpose as a sort of a divine dowser of water, and from the start her dowsing abilities seem to be very strong. She also exhibits a strong sense of confidence and independence because of this. Wanting to utilize all of these, she thus volunteers to recruit samurai in the city. This sees her brave the city and Ukyo's advances upon her for her entire stay there, as she uses her abilities to douse for samurai. She even proves herself to be very brave and confident when she jumps from a great height to avoid capture, gambling that Kanbei will save her even though he says he wants nothing to do with this quest. He does save her, and thus inadvertently, this action of hers recruits him and lays the foundations for the team. In the meantime, she also forges a sort of romantic bond with Katsushiro, and ponders if she made the right decision in coming to the city. She is very good at dowsing though, and through her efforts, and the efforts of those around her, a team is constructed and returns to Kana. In Kana, she has a heart-to-heart -heart with Katsushiro, helping him rebound from having killed a man, and leads the women in prayer during the battle. Later, she serves as a sort of decoy for the samurai infiltration of the bandit base. Um, this is kind of confusing, as she doesn't really seem to distract anyone, but I guess it could also be argued that she didn't really intend to distract so much as offer herself up to save the villagers which the bandits seemed intent on killing. Anyways, she does some more praying during the final battles, and helps the village rebuild. Up until this point, about halfway in the series, Kara has been relatively significant, although notably absent from fight scenes. Her presence starts to waver from here though, and I say this because, well, you'll see why. It initially seems the opposite though, as she joins up with Katsushiro and Kikochio to rescue Kanbei. However, since this entire thing becomes a sort of B-plot element for the next couple episodes, and since she's one of four characters as part of it, her screen time is by default quite limited for these episodes. The conclusion of the Kanbei rescue arc sees her make a few more strong showings though, including talking Sane through her difficulties, and even slapping slash breaking up with Katsushiro. From here it seems that her character can make a resurgence and maybe even get back to important character status. As such, she returns home with the main group, although again takes no part in battle, other than avoiding Ukyo's last advance. All of this comes, of course, comes after an awkward confession scene to Kanbei, which of course we will talk about. And in the last 12 minutes of the last episode, she just kind of shows up to uh, make one more advance on Katsushiro, get rejected, harvest some rice, and then pass on her dowsing bracelet to Komachi. Again, this plot summary sounds kind of incoherent, and this is because her appearances, again after that point I mentioned, become a little incoherent. She becomes a main character of a B-plot, which by default limits her presence, and then, since she isn't present in a lot of the fight scenes, and a lot of the later episodes are big fight scenes, she just kind of disappears for five or six episodes. I mean, she does appear in those episodes, but she doesn't necessarily do too much as a character. This inconsistency of actions and appearances leads to a sort of fuzzy and half-baked image of Kiara as a character. While she definitely has enough screen time and character to warrant her presence through and through, and she's definitely a defined person, it often feels like she isn't a quite complete person, and is often quite underutilized. As such, I will look at her character before circling back onto how the writing issues present kind of impact it, and perhaps why she is so underutilized slash underdeveloped. Now, Kira's character is interesting in that it is a tad tragic in both the story and the literal telling of the story. From the start, she asserts herself as a confident and brave young woman, someone who knows what she's capable of and wants to capitalize on that. We see this from her introduction as she volunteers to go to the dangerous city where she performs many brave acts, like jumping from the tall pipe to avoid certain capture. This brave streak continues throughout the series, and it is reaffirmed by many of her actions, such as joining the quest to rescue Kanbei. 
She's very confident in herself, and she's very willing to put herself in harm's way. She does not, however, like the idea of those around her coming into harm's way, as she is greatly concerned with the welfare of the people around her. And this, of course, extends to the samurai who would later join her and the village of Kana. We see this in many of her interactions as well. She begs an initially reclusive Kanbei to help the village. She refuses to feast at the Firefly Inn because she knows that the villagers are not eating as well. And she supports Katsushiro partly because she feels guilty for sort of destroying his innocence by recruiting him for this dangerous and transformative adventure. Her concern is tantamount in many of her interactions, and it displays her to be a rather serious and understanding person when needed. She is someone who is in touch with the big picture, and as such knows her place in it, and that that place is to recruit the samurai necessary to defend the village as a whole. A village which she is very personally connected to, and which she feels personally responsible to. All of this sets up Kiara's character as one of a very mature and confident woman, who is willing to take fire for her beliefs and in order to help those around her. However, where this character builds up very strongly in the first episode she is in, again, past a certain point, this kind of peters out. She isn't quite done growing though, and this is where things start to get a tad tragic. From the lofty and admittedly not very defined heights of her introduction, Kira's imperfections and immaturity start to seep in as the series progresses. We first see this when she is very weary of Kuzio. We next see this when she starts to doubt her interactions with Katsushiro and even his feelings for him. Finally, it, it accumulates with the uncomfortable confession scene in the Kanbei, who you know, professionally says no. Compounding this is her then later advance on Katsushiro, a seemingly backtrack of earlier disconnect from him. And while some of these actions feel like the natural downside to being a confident person, some of it, especially the weird Kanbei scene, just feel like borderline character assassination. Now, I'm not saying that this was done intentionally to make her look bad or bring her character down. I'm just saying that it seems like at a point, the writers wanted to take the character in new directions but lacked the screen time or know-how on how to do so properly. Now, there is nothing wrong with writing an immature character, especially if the intention is for that character to either display growth or the dangers of not growing. Kiara isn't tragic because she has immature or human moments, but because her immature moments increase as time goes on showing not growth, but regression. And this regression manifests itself in that she doesn't seem as warm of a person as she did in the beginning of the series. While her warmth is definitely still there in her last few appearances over the last, say, four or five episodes, it's not as pronounced as it used to be. Past a certain point, Kiara seems to grow very tired of the world, and a bit jaded even. She seems to be bogged down by the constant nature of conflict, and it seems as though she started doubting both herself and her decisions. This manifests itself in a sort of uncertainty which we see in some of her later appearances. The show even provides us with a unique visual to confirm this. As the series progresses, her water amulet becomes muddied over time, eventually becoming useless to her and having to be passed on to her sister Kamachi. This is tragic because it shows the physical and emotional toll the events have had on her person. These physical and mental tolls on Kiara's health kind of convey the whole point of her character, and that point is that conflict negatively affects almost everyone involved, even if they are not directly involved in the fighting itself. As a certain tertiary actor in the conflict, if you will, she's still negatively infected by it because those close to her and areas close to her are still negatively affected by it. She's close to the village, which is practically destroyed, and she's close to the villagers and the samurai, whom unfortunately suffer some casualties, even deaths. This shows us that the world is not necessarily the most fair, and that even if one doesn't fight themselves, they are not necessarily spared from the wraths of war. This ties into one of the main themes of the series itself, which is that war is not necessarily a glorious thing, and that even if in done in self-defense, is not necessarily glorious. It may be necessary from time to time to fight, but fighting should never be idealized as something good and pure. And of course we see this with a ton of characters like Kanbei, Katsushiro, the other samurai. Kiara conveys this from a sort of different angle though. She conveys war affects civilians negatively, even though that they themselves are civilians and not combatants in the most technical sense of the term. And her character does a good job showing this with the growth in her uncertainty and the growth in her questioning and the sort of disconnect she starts to form in some sort of way. I don't really know how to describe it. I mean, obviously she's still warm. She still loves her sister. She's not a horrible person. She's still a good person at the end of the series. But you can definitely tell that there is some darkness or disconnect or coldness in her heart that's brought out more to the forefront because of these traumatic and negative experiences she has had from conflict, even though that she herself does not directly fight in said conflicts. Her character does a good job conveying this. And this may also facilitate doubt and emotional wavering. 
and perhaps this even is why she did the whole Confe confession scene. She is simply seeking comfort because she has lost touch with what comforts her. And while this is a neat arc in principle of someone growing weary, a sort of downfall if you will, her screen presence and scenes devoted especially to her are not enough to necessarily pull this off well. And I think that's one of the problems of her character and her writing, which we'll get more into. But even a character who regresses can still be quite endearing and teach us a good many things. Though this is where the literal tragedy of her character comes in. The tragedy on the scale of storytelling. And that tragedy is that Kiora as a character, past a certain episode, is too underutilized and underdeveloped to show this kind of arc well. Well, I think I see what they were going for, that is, Kiara is slowly becoming frustrated and angry with the world, showing that it isn't perfect. It's just that the lack of screen presence and the lack of big event dedicated strictly to her kind of hamper this. I mean, if you think about it, Kiara's character is kind of a blank slate throughout a lot of the series. I mean, obviously, I, she does have sort of an arc, which I've commented on, but in terms of her actual character, her personality is not really that much. I mean, she's characterized as nice and kind and relatively intelligent and responsible. But other than that, we don't really understand her as a person, per se. I guess the closest window we get to seeing her is when she has some more tender moments with Katsushiro. But this just kind of reinforces the whole, oh, she's a caring and supportive woman narrative. It doesn't offer too deep of a glimpse into her character. I mean, if you look at, say, Kanbei, you can tell that this is a man who's seen a lot, he's done a lot, but he has nuance to him. He seems like a, a really mean guy, but he's really not. Or if you look at Seukyo, same thing, there's a lot of nuance. He just comes off as a sort of playboy at first who doesn't really care about anything. And then we see that's true. However, he does it in a very Machiavellian, very manipulative, you know, political theory kind of way. Or if we say, look at even a different supporting character, like say, Grobe. His character doesn't have too much screen time, isn't like super developed, but it has a very unique feel to it. You can tell that this guy, he's kind of just out there trolling everyone. He enjoys being out there in the fight. And kind of saying, oh, you can't hit me. He, he's a showman. He has a very specific air to him. And I guess what I'm saying is that Kiara kind of lacks an air or a presence. The writers didn't do the very best job of really fleshing out her presence in the series. I mean, she's in a lot of it, and she does do some very important things, but she always kind of comes off as a sort of blank slate. It seems that a lot of the times the writers didn't necessarily use her as a character, but more of a sort of tool to convey certain points. Like, I don't want to say that this is a character who's completely shaped by their interactions with other characters, but Kira kind of comes off in that way. Every character is going to be shaped by some extent to some other characters, you know, like Kanbei teaches Katsushiro how to grow up and stuff like that. But Kiara especially, to me, feels unduly shaped by those around her. I mean, think about every, like, important moment she has. The pipe scene where she proves she's brave, she does that because Kanbei's around. Or any of the Katsushiro scenes with her romance. I mean, obviously, I touched on the romance aspect in the Katsushiro video. They do genuinely seem to be interested in each other for at least a little bit and take some kind of comfort in each other. But every one of those formative scenes is just as formative for him, and he has a big input on them as well. What I'm saying is that a lot of Kiara's scenes feel dominated by other characters, and as a result, it doesn't feel like she really comes into her own so much as help other characters come into their own. And I guess that is a compliment to her supportive nature. But at the same time, it feels as though she never got the spotlight she needed. The only moment I can think of her doing something entirely on her own, just like saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to assert myself, just going to establish myself. The only moment I can think of where she completely does that on her own is the very beginning of the series where she volunteers to go to the city. I think, I'm not sure, but I think that every other, quote, big Kiara moment after that involves some other character either greatly shaping the interaction in that scene or being the kind of target of that scene, or a mixture of the two. It just feels like she never quite came into her own, and that she was underutilized on the whole. And I feel like that's kind of the tragic thing on her character that I wanted to touch on. Tragedy from an underutilization and storytelling perspective. The underuse and underdevelopment of her as a whole interrupts her growth, and arguably even shatters her character. Now, what I mean when I say this is that past the first battles for Kana, she feels undercooked, inconsistent, and even like two different characters at, at different points. Episode 3, Kiara, does not feel anything like Episode 23, Kiara. While well, the first half of the series does a relatively good job establishing her as a strong, confident woman, 
Her lack of presence past this point makes her regression feel kind of forced, rushed, and arbitrary, and all of this is detrimental to her character. Again, I think I see that they were trying to put a sort of arc in, a sort of arc where she loses her innocence and becomes world-weary, but her lack of presence means that this arc cannot be pulled off very well. Again, this leads me to ask, why is this so, though? And admittedly, this logistical part is what I find the most interesting and honestly confusing about her character, as I have theories but no real answers as to why it is the way it is. At first, I thought that, oh, her character lacks screen time because it is an, an entirely original character and the writers don't want to tweak the source material too much. I then realized, though, that this argument doesn't make any sense, as her major presence in the beginning of the series already tweaks the source material quite a bit, and again, that's fine. That's them making their own adaptation of the story. I have no issue with that. And the writers prove that they're capable of doing so very well because of Ukyo's existence, which is another nail in the coffin of the idea that they only limited her screen time because they didn't want to tweak the source material too much. In fact, I think Kiara and Ukyo are a great example of opposites on how additions to source material can really make it a writer's own unique adaptation of the material. Kiara's presence is tied to the source material as closely as possible to facilitate actions which already would have taken place and to flesh out characters who are already supposed to be on the cast and already supposed to be doing what they are doing currently. She serves to emphasize the events and characters more original to the source and kind of add an additional lens through which to view them. Ukyo, on the other hand, is the exact opposite, as his character is loud, pronounced, and arrogant. It serves only itself, even from a writing point of view, in that it adds tension and conflicts completely new to the material, and adds dimensions to the material which, that were not previously present. Kiara exists to reinforce the source material, while Ukyo exists to create a new source of material. And again, this isn't really relevant, I just thought that was very fascinating. This still doesn't explain, though, why Kiara's development kind of tails off halfway through the series. If anything, the beginning of the anime-exclusive events, i.e. the second half of the plot, should be the place for an anime-exclusive character to shine, as it means that the writers can get away with a lot more in respect to the source material. In fact, I thought this was where the series was going to go, as Kiara was again seemingly poised to be a main character after having missed a few episodes due to her not being any fight scenes. I was kind of hoping, in fact, that the source material would be tucked away for a bit and Kiara could even come into her own, perhaps even fighting. I was hoping that she could, you know, capitalize on the unique water powers, or at least divining powers she seems to have, and perhaps even use these to fight, unlocking cool predictive and water-based abilities. Uh, but no. Instead, Kiara is kind of forced into the background of the B-plot, and it's all downhill from there. The only reason I can think of why this is so is simple time crunch, maybe. Maybe the staff simply had too many characters and plot points, and not enough time and money, and therefore focused on the ones that they thought were the most important at the expense of others. And, since this is an adaptation of source material that they needed to stick to, you know, obviously there were points that were more important than the anime-exclusive stuff. Perhaps there were plot points which would have given Kiara a more coherent character arc, and that they simply didn't make it off the drawing board. Again, I don't dislike Kiara's character, I think it is strong, and I think her presence in the first quarter to third to half of the series showed great potential. I think that had the writers had more time, or for whatever reason were able to flesh out her character more, I think it could have been a great standalone character, proof that they were doing a good job of making the source material their own. Which again, they proved capable of doing as Ukyo was a great addition to the source material. It seems like they wanted to do something similar with Kiara too, as the first episode sets her up as a main character, if not THE main character, which to be honest I thought was the case initially. Um, but they just kind of drop the ball. From here, she goes to main supporting character, to a supporting character, to a background character. Again, Ukyo proved that anime original characters can work extremely well, and that the writers are competent, so I just can't help reflect on the tragedy of Kiara's underdevelopment. As a character who, again, I thought might have even been the main character, was reduced to a side note in the show which she helped kick off. Again, while her character is very strong and confident, it seems that the writers didn't feel the same when it came to writing her character and developing it. 